Welcome to Friday. It's preschool in the cozy little cabin and I'm just so glad that you joined me. We have a very fun day planned. We're going to start the morning off with seven days in a week. So get your seven days up. I'd really like you to sing it with me. Are you ready? Seven days are in a week, in a week, in a week. Seven days are in a week. Can you name them to me? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And today is Friday, which means tomorrow is Saturday. Well, let's get started, okay? We're going to review our alphabet letters that we talked about on Wednesday. We talked about the letter A, which makes that A ah sound. B, which makes the B sound, and C, which makes the K sound. A, B, C. Well, today we're going to talk about the next three letters in the alphabet. We're going to talk about D, E, F. Well, let's put our D up here. We have dog. D, A, G, dog. Let's put our E up here. We have an Elf, E L F. E makes the E eh sound like he can't hear very well. E eh? what did you say? E eh? Elf, and F makes the F sound like in fox. F O X F ox. D E F. Well, let's write those letters. Are you ready? D is super simple. We just make a stick, and D has one big fat tummy, just like that. D makes the D sound. Baby D is a circle. You climb the flagpole and you slide back down. Big D, baby D. They make the D sound, like in dog, dog. Let's erase that. Our next letter is E. We have talked about old Mr. Three-Legged E. He has one leg at the top, one leg in the middle, and one leg at the bottom. Mr. Three-Legged E. Baby E, it's a little trickier, but you can do it. You make his little head first, then you go right back through the dot and come around. Baby E. E makes the E eh sound. Eh. And the last letter is kind of like E, except he doesn't have three legs. He only has two legs. One, two. And baby F is like a candy cane, except you put a little line through it. F makes the F sound, like in fox. F, F. So I would really like it if you would practice those at home. D, E, and F. Well, let's play a quick little game here. I'm going to take these down. Now, we're going to put these letters up here. D, E, F. You'll notice this E looks a little bit different. At preschool, we make Mr. Three-Legged E. One, two, three. But when you get in kindergarten, this is the kind of E you're going to make. So it's good just to remember that. All right, now we have some pictures. Let's see, the first picture is a picture of a donkey. Donkey, duh, duh. Does donkey make the f sound at the beginning of the word? Eh, or duh, like duck. You are so right. It goes right under the duck. Duck and donkey make the duh sound. Oh, let's look at the next picture. There's a fish, f, fish. Should I put the fish? under the e, like egg and e, or should I put the fish under the f, like fireman, fireman, fish. They both make the f sound. They go under the f. Oh, look at this guy. It's an elephant. All right, e, 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 elephant. I know right where he goes. Egg, e, e, elephant, right under the e. This is a door. I'm gonna open the door. D, d, donkey. You're right, you're so smart. It goes right under the donkey. D, 
duck, donkey, door. This is a feather. Feather makes the fu sound. Should I put feather under e elephant or under f fish? <gasps> You're right, right under the fish. F, fireman, fish, feather. And the last one is an egg. You've seen some of these in your refrigerator. Egg. Oh, looky there, they helped us out. There's some eggs. So we know right away, egg goes under the elephant. We'll put the egg there. Well, I have lots of friends with us today, and I have three baskets. And these baskets are gonna, whoops, help us sort our animal. We have the D basket that makes the duh sound, the E basket that makes the eh sound, and the F basket that makes the fu sound. So let's look at all of our friends that came today. Well, I love this little guy. He's just so cute. When I saw him, I thought, oh, I need to take him home with us. He's a little doggy, duck, duck, doggy. Should I put doggy in the basket with the fu sound at the beginning of the word? No. How about the S? No. I should put doggy in the basket with the duh sound. There you go, doggy. We're gonna find some more friends to join doggy. All right, I like this guy. You know why I like him? He's just so funny. Look at his eyes. This is a funny little fish, a funny fish. Hmm, should I put the funny fish in the D basket, the E basket, or the F? Funny fish makes the F sound. <gasps> F makes the F sound. All right, funny fish, you go right in there. Okay, uh, let's see. Oh, I love this guy, Horton. We read the story earlier this year about Horton Hatches of the Egg, and he was such a genuinely good friend, and we like Horton. But Horton is an elephant. Eh, eh, eh. Elephant. Hmm. Duh, duh. Elephant? No. Fa, fa, elephant? No. <gasps> E makes the S sound like elephant. There you go, Horton. Snuggle in. All right, I'm gonna grab this one. When I saw this little stuffed animal, I thought, oh, we need to have this at preschool. This is a flamingo, fa, fa. So should flamingo go with the duh sound? Duh, duh, no. Eh, no. <gasps> F, flamingo and a funny fish. They should go together. There he goes, right in there with the funny fish. Let's grab this. He's our duck, D duck, duck. Does duck make the S sound? No. I think duck and dog make the same sound. There they go, in the D basket. Let's grab our little frog. Little froggy, we like you. Okay, froggy. Does frog make the duh sound like dog and duck? Th th no. It doesn't make the sound like elephant. I know. Frog and fish and flamingo all make the fa sound. Now, who is hiding Hello. back here? I do want to play with Elmo. Thank you, Elmo. Look at him. Let's see what else he has to say. He said, he, we do like to play. We love to play at preschool. Elmo helped us out. Look, Elmo has the letter E on his shirt. Elmo. So we know eh, eh, Elmo goes right in here with the Are elephant. He wondered if you're going to play with Elmo. Elmo likes to talk a lot, so we might have to move him back. Oh, here's another one. A dolphin. Duh, duh. Dolphin. Okay, let's pretend later. Okay, we will. Later we'll do it. All right, a dolphin. Does dolphin make the duh sound like duck and dog? It sure does. We'll put the dolphin right in here. Oh, this could be a tricky one because his name is D Dumbo, but he is an elephant. So I don't know if I should put Dumbo in with the the dolphin and the duck, or maybe because he's an elephant, I should put him in with the E, make the S sound. I think I will. I'll put Dumbo in with the other elephant so he's not lonely. 
Oh my goodness, another elephant. Look at this guy. He is so happy and friendly. Well, we know right where he goes, and we'll stand him right back here behind the letter E. Do you remember this from the very first preschool lesson? So are our ducks, and we have our ducks are right in a row. And that would be like Mrs. Kapenka at preschool and all of you little children walking to the gym. I sure do miss you. Well, these are ducks, so we're going to put them in here with the dolphin and the dog and the duck. Did I get everybody? I think I did, but I have one more guy over here, and he's a dinosaur. But you know what I love about this guy? He has a way cool book that I'm going to read to you. It says, How Do Dinosaurs Say I'm Mad? And we're going to learn a really important lesson about not becoming angry and making a bad choice. And our dinosaur is going to teach us. Come here, little dinosaur. We're going to put you right over here. All right. How do dinosaurs say I'm mad? Are you ready to listen, Mr. Dinosaur, that starts with the letter D? How does a dinosaur act when he's mad? Does he roar and slam the door, yell at his mom or at his dad? Oh, I hope not. When he can't get his way, does he boast, I'll be bad? Is that what dinosaurs say when they're mad? When Papa says no, does he grumble and pout? I hope not. When Mama says no, does he throw his toys about? When he's told to sit still, does he kick at the chair? Does he act as if mother and father aren't there? Look what he's doing. He's pouring things out on the floor. Oh, what a mess. When he hears, take a nap, does he give dirty looks? When he's told, quiet down. <gasps> no, does he rip up his books? No cookies today. He flung a mug at the cat. Poor cat. Time for bed. Does he bang on the floor with his bat? Oh, I certainly hope not. None of these behaviors are very good choices. No, a dinosaur doesn't. He counts up to ten. Then after a timeout, he breathes calmly. And then he cleans up his mess. And he picks up the mug, and he says, I'm so sorry, and he gives a big hug. Not mad, I'm so glad, little dinosaur. That was sure a good book. Sometimes when we get angry, we don't make the best choices. And that's why I liked the way the story ended. Because when you're unhappy about something, it said, just count to ten. Then take a deep breath. Tell mommy and daddy you're sorry for the way that you acted. And start all over again. That's a wonderful story. And thank you, Dinosaur, for letting us read this story to you today. On Wednesday, we talked about the five ways that God made us so that we can learn lots of things. We're going to talk about those again for just a minute. So we have our taste. We have our ears to listen. We have our nose to smell, our fingers to touch, and our eyes to see. Well, we talked about taste. Did you find something salty at home? Did you find something sweet at home? How about sour? When you tasted those, it sends messages to your brain so you can understand whether it was salty or sour or sweet. Well, today we're going to talk about hearing. And when I think about listening, I think about the word attentiveness. Remember, we learned attentiveness. Stop, look, and listen because that's how we learn what we're supposed to learn. And that's really important, hearing is, because... Sometimes when at preschool we would play music and we would march to our music. So you would listen and you would march. Sometimes you'll hear a horn honk and it's like, oh, wonder why they're honking. Maybe they're trying to tell me to move out of the way. Have you ever been in the car riding with mommy and daddy and you heard a siren go round and woo, woo, woo? 
Mommy has to listen to that because she needs to scoot over so the ambulance can pass her. We also need to be good listeners to Mommy and Daddy and Grandpa and Grandma because they have many things they would like to teach us, as well as the teacher. And you were such good listeners at preschool. I was always so proud of you. So attentiveness is stop, look, and listen. We want to listen carefully so we can learn what we have to learn. Okay? That was a, a great way for God to create us so that we can learn by tasting things and we can learn by hearing. Well, it's time for us to go again. I sure do miss you when the time goes so quickly. I just wish that you could come and visit me right here at my cozy little cabin. Well, maybe someday you can. Well, let's sing our little song. I'll see you on Monday, on Monday, on Monday. I'll see you on Monday in my cozy little cabin here. I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.